Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Monday, May 30th, and um, yesterday at church, it was very clear that the Holy Spirit was leading me to do a series of videos where we really look at the Lord's Prayer very closely. Now, not last week, but the week before, we were talking about, I believe it was Revelations 12, 7, where it said to remain faithful in prayer, and we examined what that means. That means that it's a consistent part of your life. It's a consistent part of what you do on a daily basis. It is um, not just something where you're calling out to God when things are going rough. It's not just something where you're praising God where things are going well. It is a regular part of your life. That's what faithful prayer means. And when we look at the Lord's Prayer, it's tended to fall into that... Um, People have tended to twist it, I should say, and fall into that category of that spirit of religion of when I pray, these are the words I say, I check it off my list and I'm done. But when you really look at what the Lord was teaching them, you're really going to understand it in a different way and it will take on new meaning to you. It will have much more depth to you. Um, the church that I currently t attend does the Lord's Prayer in each service on Sunday mornings. They don't do it out of a, um, a routine or out of that spiritual spirit of religion. They're doing it to stop and focus on who God is. They're thinking about the meaning of what is going on behind this prayer. And it's not just a rote recitation of something where you're not even thinking about it. You really want to take that time to examine it and think about it. So let's pray. Lord, I praise you and thank you for the fact that you've given us so much guidance and direction, that you've taught us to pray, that you've taught us that the, the faithful prayer is such a joy to you. Lord, as we continue to dive into this deeper relationship with you, show us ways we can pray that we've never thought of before. Let us see that we can bring anything to you and that you are there for us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, yesterday I was having a conversation with a bunch of people and that we were saying, you know, you really cannot pray wrong. You can take anything to God. I mean, I remember back in the days when people wore pantyhose. Um, I had a friend that told me that she prayed for her pantyhose to not get runs. And I was like, that's a weird thing to pray. But you can literally pray anything. If it matters to you, it matters to God and he is there for you. So we're starting, to, the, the Lord's Prayer is in two passages. It's in Matthew 9 and it's also in Luke 11. We're going to be flip-flopping between the two as we go through these lessons. And we're only going to do a little bit each day and really examine it in depth. And then I'm planning to do like a summary of all the videos at the end. So in Matthew 9, 9, the disciples had just asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And this is Jesus's response. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Now in Luke eleven two, 2, it says, He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Now there's two phrases here that are identical. Why is it different? Just like when you have two people that witness a car accident. They're going to see it from different angles. They're going to remember different pieces. That's how it is. You could have four people that go and they listen to a comedian and all four of them are going to remember different jokes. It's going. That's how it is when you have people as witnesses. Luke is a witness. Matthew is a witness. They're remembering it somewhat differently. That's okay. It doesn't make it inaccurate. It's just saying um, Luke's is a little more brief. Matthew's is a little bit long. So basically what's happening is, first of all, who are you addressing this prayer to? You're addressing it to God the Father. You're using that word Father, which has that level of intimacy. You're saying, yes, you are my parent. You're in charge of me. You're over me. Then they're saying, then Jesus says, hallowed be your name. Now I looked up the word hallowed in the dictionary, and it means consecrated, made holy, Hallowed ground, greatly revered and honored. So when you're saying hallowed be your name, 
you are saying, Lord, I am approaching you with that reverential fear, that healthy fear of the Lord that we are supposed to have. I'm in awe of you. I recognize your holiness, your power, your strength, your majesty. I am recognizing who you are in this relationship and who I am. I am recognizing that you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You're the one on the throne. And then in Matthew, um, in Matthew 6, it says, your kingdom come. And in Luke 11, it says, your kingdom come. What does that mean? Basically, what that means is that we want your God's kingdom to build. We're saying, Lord, bring your kingdom. You've given us that prophecy that Christ is coming. You've given us that prophecy that Christ is going to come back a second time and set up that new Jerusalem and that and restore that Garden of Eden. We're saying, bring that kingdom, Lord. We want your kingdom to come. Now, that's where this, um, this little phrase ends in Luke 11, but then we get more information in Matthew 9. It says, your will be done. It's not based on what I want. It's not based on what you want. It's all based on what is what God has planned, what God wants. It's all about God's will. And as your relationship with Christ grows, you're going to find that the things that you want start to line up with the things that God wants more and more. Why? Because you want God to have that glory. You're saying, Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, everything is done according to God's will. On earth, everything is done according to God's will. And we're saying, Lord, we want it to stay that way. We want you to stay on that throne. You, we want you to remain the King of Kings. We want you to remain the Lord of Lords. So as you go into your prayer closet today, really give yourself that gut check. And I know I say that all the time. Are you keeping him on the throne? Are you saying your will be done, not my will be done? Your kingdom come, not trying to build my own kingdom. And let everything on earth be done the way it is done in heaven so that it stays in line with your perfect will. Do you really have that attitude? And are you remembering how hallowed his name is? How holy he is? And I love the fact that it says, hallowed be your name. Remember, we're taught to pray in Jesus' name. When we call out things in the name of Jesus Christ, the, the demons flee, Satan trembles. His name has power. Why? Because it's hallowed, because it's holy. That's why it has that power. As you go into your prayer closet, pray over your attitude and praise him for the holiness of his name. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.